All right, so today we're going to talk about health education compared to health promotion. Um, we're going to talk about why is health education and health promotion so important for the population. So health education is a social science that draws from the biological, environmental, psychological, and physical and medical sciences to promote health and prevent diseases. Um, also prevent disability and premature death through education-driven voluntary behavior change activities. Basically, health education is motivation to change behavior. Um, that draws from those sciences. They talked about the biological, the environmental. Um, it prevents diseases and promote health. Um, and disability and premature death. So it helps with the mortality rates um, among the communities. So there are so many different divisions of health education. I majored in health sciences and I am a certified health educator. So like there's so many different things that I can do with a certified health education specialist certification. So there's sexual health, you know, dealing with sexually transmitted diseases, Pregnancy, uh, maternal health is in there too. There's environmental health. You're dealing with pollution, environmental waste, um, acid rain, um, litter in the oceans and how that affects the environment. You have mental health education. We're gonna talk about mental health disorders, bipolar, depression, anxiety, postpartum depression and schizophrenia. You also got workplace health. You know, you got to deal with OSHA, occupational, which is the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, HIPAA, the Health Information Portability and Accountability Act with hospitals, protecting their information. OSHA is like safe practices for like picking out the box and not how not to hurt yourself on the job um, and ways to prevent harm. Um, you have school health, how to deal with physical education with exercises with the students. Sexual health classes, teaching the kids about um, how to prevent pregnancy, uh, the, their body, puberty, um, the different areas of the penis and different areas of the vagina, the parts, you got nutritional lunches, how to eat properly, balanced meals at lunches and breakfasts. Um, you also have nutrition health, which is balanced diet with the protein fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, overall healthy food. So with the sexual health, I found this stats and a lot of people, a lot of people in the healthcare field know these stats. Like one in five people in the USA have an STI or has had an STI. That's, that's, near, that's nearly 68 million people being infected with a sexually transmitted disease in 2018. 26 million, the new cases of sexually transmitted disease in 2018. And half of those that are infected of new cases are people between the age of 15 and 24. Please get screened. It is so important. It doesn't even matter if you know if you're in a monogamous relationship for all these years, you should get screened every year for an STI or every time you get a new partner. Um, and the cost of sexual transmitted diseases are totaling nearly 16 billion in direct medical costs. In my other video, I talked about primary prevention, secondary prevention, and tertiary prevention. And like screening is secondary, using a condom is primary. Remember, always use a condom, always get screened for STIs. So this graph is about healthy foods, the different calories that are in healthy foods. I tell my family members all the time um, to eat ground turkey compared to ground beef. It's so much healthier for you. But they have a breakdown of this um, lean beef versus beef fat. If you do eat beef, make sure you get the 97 or greater percent lean. That means it's less fat. It's only 3% fat versus like 87%. I don't even know if they have that. That's way more fat than the 
7% lean beef. I talked about the bread, the whole milk, skim milk is what's best if you do um, drink milk, and skim milk is basically fat-free milk. Talked about popcorn, air popcorn versus butter, um, espresso with coffee and chocolate syrup, and applesauces with the added sugar and unsweetened applesauces. I also found this um, substance priority list on the FDA website. Um, they talked about the top five dangerous substance list. Uh, for those of you who are crime show junkies, you probably have seen arsenic being used in a not okay fashion. Um, so arsenic is number one, lead, mercury, uh, vinyl chloride, and then that last one, folliochlorinated. Not even gonna try to pronounce that word, but um, yes, ars you can have arsenic poisoning and you can you can die and get sick. You can have lead poisoning and you can die and get sick if you're too exposed to these um substances. It can have bad health effects for you. So that is health education. Those are the divisions and health promotion. We're going to talk about health promotion next. Um, and I'm going to tell you what they told me during undergrad of what really is the difference. Because you can't really tell the difference by comparing this definition to the health education definition. So the World Health Organization defined health promotion as um, the process of enabling people to increase control over and to improve their health. What my undergrad professor told me is that health education, you're providing them with, of course, health education, how to improve their behavior, how to prevent diseases. Um, health promotion, you're giving them resources to. Uh, so you're not just talking to them, you're telling them, hey, this is how you do this. These are the resources that I can give you and provide for you on how to manage you, how to manage your diabetes and how to prevent diabetes. You know, how to um, screen for diabetes, what resources that we have in a community that can help you prevent obesity as far as healthy foods and exercises, uh, what resources that we have out here that can offer you free gym memberships, walkable sidewalks so that way you don't have to pay for a gym membership. Things like this, which gives the communities resources to become a healthier communities. You're not just Given them education, you're showing them how to do this and how to maintain their behavior for long-term behavior change. So health promotion involves, you know, the disease, living with the disease, family caregiver, um, the psycho spiritual dimension of it, you know, how you feel, what your beliefs are, potential self-care, what are you doing in self-care? Um, if you are obese and you like to eat food as therapy, diet is not a good behavior. What can we do about that? How can we change that self-care to make it better for you emotionally and physically and spiritually? And then the tech technologicals of the care. So promotion components. So I got some of these from my, uh, my shadow's responsibilities because we're health education specialists, but we're health, we do health promotion. We give people resources. So the first one is advocacy, advocate. So advocate, you're gonna boost the factors that encourage health. So healthy foods, health education specialists hosting a low cost healthy cooking demonstration. Um, how to cook a meal with chicken, whole grain rice, and green beans. How to make green beans where it's still healthy and it still has flavor. Physical activity, um, physical, a health education specialist explaining a presentation on exercises to do in your office or healthy yoga poses. You know, you don't have to wait to get home to exercise. You can do some light exercises in your chair with like your feet and your shoulders and just some light stretching, which will help you. So I found this brochure we can from the, um, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. So we can, it's like a lesson for raising a healthy child. You know, you got that banana, which is healthy foods, right? You got bike, which is activities. I got to take away the TV because 
too much time on your tablet and on your TV is not good for you. And more kids these days are spending more time on their tablet and their TV more than what they did in the past. And it's not good for your eyes. It's not good for concentration. It's not good for physical activity. Kids are not going outside and playing any longer. They're just playing their video games, playing their tablet, and watching TV. So banana, healthy foods, plus exercise, minus TV, equals love, equals a healthy, happy child. Great. So next on health promotion components, we're going to talk about facilitate and enable. So that means allowing all people to achieve health equity. No discrimination. We're all, no matter what we, no matter what we're racist, no matter what our gender is or our sex is, or our lifestyle and our lifestyle choices, far as decisions we make in our lives, we all should be allowed health equity. We all should have fair chances of achieving health. And for those of us who have health disparities, who have a low chance of becoming healthier compared to what someone else. We need more resources to become healthy. So cultural competence come in hand. Um, a health education specialist creates a program to help Spanish speaking pregnant women with prenatal care. Um, a healthcare provider makes home visits to African American families with no transportation for diabetes screening because these families will not get screened because they do not have transportation. So that healthcare provider is providing them with a resource that will come to their house and actually screen them, taking away the, the need to have transportation when they don't have it. They still have the opportunity to get screened like everyone else. Um, the health education specialist that creates a program to help Spanish speaking pregnant women with prenatal care. Um, because that Spanish speaking population, they don't they don't speak they don't speak English, they don't speak Spanish. So we're gonna get that resource in that's gonna speak Spanish, that's gonna let them know how to properly get prenatal care and the best prenatal care for them. We're not gonna be like, oh, they don't speak English, we're not gonna get bothered. No, we're gonna cater our programs for that population. We have health literacy which is advocating for individuals who have low health literacy levels or achievement of a certain level of knowledge to make healthier choices. I'm sorry. So yeah, low health literacy. Health literacy is the achievement of a certain level of knowledge to make healthier decisions. Um, sometimes people find those pamphlets or those websites where the wording is so jargon is so specific that the general population cannot understand it because those health professionals made that thinking that all people speak their health language like no they do not um so we need to make sure that health literacy plays a part we don't want to give someone something they don't understand we're going to give them something they understand so they can comprehend it know it understand it and promote it in your behaviors for better health. So according to the CDC uh, website, people with low health literacy are more likely to visit an emergency room because they don't know if they should, you know, if they can just wait to see their doctor, they're gonna panic, they don't know, they're gonna go to the emergency room, which costs way more money than seeing your primary care provider or another urgent facility that is not an emergency room. We have more hospital stays. You know, the doctor give them medicine and they like, oh, take this, blah, blah, blah. Or they don't even tell them to take it a certain way. They just give them the medicine, don't explain it to them. That person have low health literacy. They don't understand. So they're not gonna take that medication like they're supposed to. And they're gonna have more hospital stays. And again, they're less likely to follow treatment plans. Like I said, they're not gonna take that um, prescription because they have low health, literacy, low health literacy levels, the doctor did not explain it properly to them, and they have more mortality rates. They don't take their medicine, they don't do what they're supposed to do, because they don't know and something can happen, like death. Um, okay, so the another health component, another health promotion component is mediate or lesion. So lesion is like, um, 
and health promotion is through collaboration collaboration across all sectors. Public sectors, which is like the government, non-for-profit sectors, which is private sectors, like some hospitals and Amazon, for instance, um, or clinic, maybe. Those are all sectors. So it'd be collaboration across all those sectors, collaboration with each other. The clinic talking to the State Department of Health. The clinic talking to Amazon about how to um, have a healthier workplace. Screening for them, um, giving them shots when they need it. So public sector, again, local health departments or any state federal or local health department or any departments are public sectors. So example, a local health department partners with the State Department of Health to increase contact tracing of COVID-19 in 2020. That is an example of a public sector lesion. And you guys excuse my typo with of um, a private sector is hospitals and clinics. And an uh, example of that will be Indiana Department of Health hosting webinars to update healthcare professionals on vaccine rollout. I know these two because I work in public health and I work for the I worked for the federal and I work for the state health department. So this Indiana Health Department collaborating with health professionals and nurses, school nurses, they that is they're, they're, that's a lesion, that's a collaboration. They're telling them, hey, this is the cases. Specifically, what question do you have? If someone is exposed to COVID-19 for our children, what do you do? How to maintain di di distance in the classroom while safely providing great education for our students. Um, the public sector, asking um, the health departments, what do you need? Can you do your contract tracing? If you cannot, we can provide people for you so that it takes some pressure off of you so that you can still do your job and have help because there's so many cases of COVID-19. So a CDC foundation is a, a lesion. It's, it's a lesion. Um, so basically what the CDC foundation do is they, they work with the CDC and they work with the state the state governments and the local health departments and they collaborate and when there's funding the cdc sends people if the state and local health departments need people they send people to the health the health departments to help out like for covid 19 the cdc foundation hired a lot of people to help out with the um, contact tracing with a lot of state governments because people were overwhelmed we never had a pandemic like this before. Um, so we needed, they needed a lot of people. And that was one of those people that was fortunate enough to work for the state government um, in collaboration with the CDC Foundation. First out of college. So I have a video that I'm going to play about the CDC Foundation.
And that is basically the power of collaboration with the CDC Foundation. And their impact is very great. A lot of state health departments and local health departments wouldn't have, would be overwhelmed still if it wasn't for the CDC Foundation and sending um, people, public health workers to states to help out. That's an awesome organization and foundation that I'm happy to have worked with. And those are my references.